Hi everyone, my name is Paul. Uh, I'm developer of Evangelist at PyCon, and today I'm going to be showing you the easiest way I know personally to upgrade the LTE firmware on any of our LTE supporting boards. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is acquire yourself some hardware. You'll need a module. In this case, it's a GPI. I'll explain why I've blacked out the label in a minute. Don't panic. An SD or micro SD card, an SD card reader of some kind, or a way to read and write SD cards. An expansion board and a USB cable. In my case, I'm going to be using Windows 10 uh, and VS Code with the PyMaker extension to communicate with the board. You can use whichever solution you prefer as long as you can open it up, get access to the Python terminal. All right, let's go ahead and continue. The first thing you're going to want to do is go and get the latest firmware files. You can do this by coming to our forums, which can be accessed either via the homepage, support and community, hovering over support and clicking that and coming to the PyCon forum link. Alternatively, you can just go directly to forum.pycom.io and it'll get you to the same place. Once you've done that, you wanna come ahead and go to, you wanna create an account and log in. You will need an account, you will need to be logged in to be able to see this and come along to the announcements only for members section right near the top here. I'm gonna click in there and you'll find this single thread. There is only one thread at the moment. There may be more, but when you look at this, but for now we only have the one. Inside this thread, you will find a link to the latest firmware zip, firmwares available to download as a zip, and the username and password required to access them. Unfortunately, this thread had the username and password in it in plain text, so I won't be opening it on the video camera because it would defeat the point of having username and password at all. So once you've gone ahead and downloaded those, you'll be left with these two zip files. Well, in your case, you may only have one, depending on whether you want MBIOT or CatM1, but I've gone ahead and downloaded them both. Can go ahead and extract those. I'm going to be using WinRAR, so it's nice and simple. Just right click, extract here, and you'll end up with two folders one for CATM1, one for MBIOT, both containing the relevant firmwares. We're going to go want to go ahead and write those to our SD card. So I'm going to quickly pop it into the adapter. I'm pretty sure I don't need to show you this on camera. And as I've already screwed this up once today, do remember to check that the right protection toggle on your SD card is in fact not set to lock the SD card and pop it in your machine. And I'm going to go ahead and copy both of these folders onto my SD card. They're only tiny, it will probably happen instantly if you're on a reasonably quick machine. So I'm going to click through and just confirm that I do indeed have both those folders there and the contents are there too. Cool, and we're good to go there. Brilliant. So I have a prepped SD card. Note the SD card will need to be formatted to FAT32 or FAT16. Uh, it will need to use the MBR partition table, which is fairly standard on most. I'd be surprised if your SD card wasn't. Um, but other than that, that's, that's really it to it. Put the files on the SD card. And then go ahead and we're going to go ahead and pop the SD card into our expansion board. And this is where I get to describe why I've coloured in my label. Uh, in previous videos, I'd, I'd left the label on. Um, what I don't, however, some of the latest boards, the orientation of the label won't match what you see in this video had I not coloured it in. And I don't want people relying on the label's orientation to know how to plug it, the correct orientation for the board. It may not always be the same. What you actually want to do is look for the little LED that you will see on the end of the board and make sure it's aligned with the US micro USB connector on the expansion board. And then you can go ahead and pop it in, making sure that the pins are in the right place, all nice and good. Give it a little wiggle, make sure it's nice and snug. Please note that I did all of this with the board unpowered and unconnected. Please don't try and unplug and unplug modules while the board's connected. You might damage them, and it just means you'll have to email me at support and I'll have to tell you you've broken your board. And we're gonna go ahead and plug that into my machine. As you probably just heard, there would have been a few little beeps as Windows detects it. It'll power up, and by default, it'll start flashing the little blue LED as a heartbeat. All right, so that's that in terms of prepping hardware, uh, getting our firmware software and everything ready. So I'm going to go ahead and open up VS Code. You don't have to use VS Code as long as you can get an access to the PyCon console via uh, Telnet or Putty or any of the methods you have for connecting to it, you're good to go. But in this case, I'm using 
pipe the pi maker extension in vs code as it's simple it's easy and it just works for me now the first thing i want to do is go and turn this little blue flashing led off because it's distracting it's not a required step but i get distracted by flashy leds because you know i'm a bit of a geek and it's flashy leds who doesn't love them so we're going to go ahead Ooh. I'm going to try not to typo that. It's a great start, isn't it? And we're going to go ahead and run pycom.heartb and passing false. And you'll notice that the blue flashy LED is gone. Now, again, this isn't a required step. It's just something I like to do. The next thing we're going to do is check to see which version of the firmware is currently running on our little LTE modem on the board. So we know which upgrades to apply. We can do this by running import sqns upgrade. Let that run, and then run sqns upgrade.info. It'll go ahead, it'll do some communication with the modem, and after a second or so, it will spit out a couple of strings. The one you're looking for is the very last string, and you're looking for this very last section, which in my case is 33080. Depending on when your board was ordered and when it came out of the factory, you're probably going to be running 33080 to by default, but it could be something else. Anyway, now that you've detected that you are, in fact, which version you're running, we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at those two folders that we extracted onto the SD card earlier. As you can see, I've actually opened VS Code to that folder so I can see the contents nice and easily without too much hassle. And we will notice that I have various files. We have the full upgrades, which you can mostly ignore now. We have these updated L files, which again, you can mostly ignore now unless you've contacted support and we've told you otherwise. And then we have these up G diff files. And those are differential upgrades, so they're much smaller, they don't contain the whole firmware, and they flash much quicker. And are just genuinely easier to use. We're looking, so in this case, I think we will flash, uh, we'll do MBIOT, and we'll make sure we're running MBIOT. Please note that you can just switch between CAT1, M1 and MBIOT by choosing the appropriate versions of the files. So I'm going to be looking for an up diff. I'm looking for, for a version that starts at 33080 to match the string here and goes to whichever version I want, which should of course be the latest. So in this case, I'm going to be upgrading from 33080 to 40343, which is pretty much what I want. So once you confirm that's in there, you've got your SD card plugged in, everything's connected. You've got a nice terminal connection. You're ready to go ahead and run the firmware upgrade process. So again, you can import sqns upgrade. If you've imported it previously to run this info command, you shouldn't need to import it again. But just for clarity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and do so. Once you've imported that, you can go ahead and run. Oh, let me just copy and paste it from my other monitor here. Oh, actually, we're going to sqns upgrade.run. And we're looking for the SD card. We're going to be looking for MB140343. MB140343. There we go. Try not to make typos again. And we're going to be looking for this up G diff. And we're going to be going from version 33080 to version 40343.g. Now, of course, you could use the same thing for cat m1, but the file path would be different. In my case, it would be sd cat m1 39529, and I'd be passing in the full path to this 33080 to 39529 again. And that's, that's really all there is to it. You can go ahead and run that. It'll take a few seconds to communicate the board, stick it in firmware mode, and it'll start sending code over to the mode and to flash it. This may take a few minutes, Please don't unplug the board, just let it run. Again, I've said it may take a few minutes, but just wait for it to complete. And at this point, we're actually going to go ahead and speed up the video a little bit um, and skip to the end of this process. Whilst this happens, um, if anyone has any questions or would like to see tutorials about anything or genuinely needs support, 
You can contact myself at paul at pycom.io. That's P-A-U-L at P-Y-C-O-M dot I-O. Or support at pycom.io. Alternatively, as you saw earlier, we do have community forums that are quite active. And myself and other members of the team do actively monitor them and help out with support queries as much as we can. So it looks like it's uploaded the files ready to flash. And it's now about to run the firmware update process. As mentioned, this may take several minutes. Do not disconnect the power, as it says in big capital letters. Uh, and just leave it to run. Now, of course, because I've disabled the heartbeat on here, you can't actually see whether it's doing anything. There is no visual indication on the board. The only indication you're going to get is from your terminal. So please just let it run. It'll take a few minutes, but it will eventually get there. Another thing to note is that it is exactly the same process uh, for upgrading our other LTE compatible boards. It's just in this case, I'm using a GPI as it was what I had to hand. The process is identical for CAT M1 as it is MBIOT. The only thing that will differ are the firmware files you upload and the path that you pass in. One thing to note, it does look like it tries to run it twice. This is normal. Do not panic, it's not actually running it twice. There's just several steps to the firmware update process. And there we go. After a few minutes, it did in fact complete. It has in fact pointed out that we now are on LR6000, but as you can see, we now have this 40343. We are in fact running the latest version. If you'd like to confirm that yourself, you of course can again run import SQNS upgrade and then SQNS upgrade dot info. Give it a few seconds and you'll see that again, there we go. We are now running version 40343 of the MBIOT framework. And that's really all there is to it. Nice and simple, put the files on an SD card, plug it in, run a couple of commands, job done. Everyone's happy. Again, if you have any issues with this, feel free to submit a support ticket, get in touch with me on the forums, send me an email, send smoke signals, I'll try and respond. Can't always see the smoke signals depending on where you are. Who knows, perhaps like a bigger fire. But anyway, I hope everyone's having a lovely day and that's that for the firmware update process. Bye.